You can go on. Okay. Uh, thanks. Um, let me share my screen. So we will be. Um, let's first. Let me share my screen. Okay, I hope you can see my screen. Uh, and uh, so the language you use is, uh, is Python. So every language has unit testing uh, functionalities built in the language. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about Python because it's what we use uh, in data science for most of the time. Uh, so uh, what is uh, unit testing first of all? Uh, so as you can see, uh, it's a way of testing your uh, software and uh, usually software is organized into classes and classes have functions and so unit testing is meant to test each of those classes functions um, okay um, and then uh, you what you want to see is bugs uh, so basically you have for instance in the in our case we have a data set and you are trying to read it from uh, we are trying to read it and then put it in a in a data frame. Uh, what we want to see is whether we are reading it correctly. If you are computing anything, whether we are computing anything correctly. So if you are computing something correctly, then that would be a bug, um, uh, a logical bug, but uh, a bug nonetheless. Uh, so what you want to do in your unit test is to put the expected values uh, of, uh, of a function and then compare them to what you actually get uh, uh, from the function. And that's how you spot uh, the bugs. And that's what unit testing is, comparing the actual, the true values uh, against the values that your functions produce. Uh, also, of course, when uh, when a function doesn't, uh, has some bugs, syntax errors, uh, it, uh, unit testing catches those as well. Um, so there are different ways you can do unit testing. Uh, so these are modules uh, for Python. Uh, unit test uh, is one of them, PyTest and NOS. Uh, but uh, most of the time we use uh, unit test because uh, this one is built into Python. So it's uh, we, we usually you want to use things which are not uh, third party. You want to use things which are built uh, uh, into the language that you're using. So, but you to 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 build a unit a unit test uh, module uh, package, you have to um, uh, basically uh, put your tests uh, into classes and methods. Uh, so what this means is um, uh, you you have a class for unit testing for testing, and then this unit testing contains all the methods you're testing from your class. So um, if you have uh, a class called uh, uh, extract tweet uh, df. Uh, you are you are going to have and then it has methods a b c d. You are going to have uh, another class in your test package uh, called uh, uh, say uh, test uh, extract df. And then you are also going to have all those methods a b c d test a test b test c test uh, d. And so when you use unit test, uh, the class, the unit test class has access to the class that is testing. Uh, so here, uh, uh, the, the, it relies heavily on uh, asserting equality of, uh, of methods, uh, of, of uh, method values. Uh, here is the output of methods. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, you don't use the regular assert um, uh, functionality in Python, you use the uh, assert equal, uh, which is uh, inherited from unit test uh, dot test case uh, uh, class. Uh, and this is provided by unit test, uh, this class here. So this class here defines a method, uh, assert, uh, assert equal. And this assert equal is basically comparing the values, uh, the actual values, the values are 100% sure that are true to the values uh, uh, which your methods are producing to see whether they are equal. Um, 
yeah and um and so uh here the way you build a uh uh, test uh, a unit test module, or uh, 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 here you you basically define a directory. You you create a directory test, and then uh, here uh, you can you can put in a class uh, of your, which contains your test, and then the, the you need to put in the init init pi uh, because this is like the the engine of your unit tests. Uh, it basically triggers whenever you call the uh, class in the, in, in the test directory, this init uh, uh, triggers that class to run. So it triggers the tests uh, to run. So I hope you've looked at the unit, at uh, the test uh, directory in the, uh, in the Twitter analysis, uh, Twitter data analysis uh, uh, repository. Uh, it has the, this same exact structure. You have the uh, tests Direct directory, and then you also have uh, uh, test extract data frame. So you may also want to test, for instance, uh, 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 clean uh, the, the other one, clean uh, the, other, the other class we have. So another thing you can do is um, uh, like how can you structure your uh, like a simple test? Uh, so um, first of all, you, you, of course, you have to know which classes you're testing. Uh, usually, you want to test everything uh, because it's um, it's the best approach. Uh, there's this is uh, this famous approach to software development called uh, uh, test-driven development. And actually, here you start from uh, you start by building test uh, unit tests, uh, uh, and then you develop your software uh, one functionality by one functionality making sure that when you develop a functionality, you test it, uh, and then you move on to another functionality only after you've tested that uh, functionality you just built. So basically, this shouldn't be a big question. Uh, what uh, do you want to test? Because uh, for a good practice, you, should, uh, you shouldn't trust your, uh, your code. You can't put so much trust in it. Uh, and um, uh, whether you are writing a unit test or integration test. Uh, so this is like, um, uh, for unit tests, you are trying to build, uh, to test one uh, function. I mean, one class by one, but you may also want to test uh, all classes uh, together. So uh, that's, that's what this is about. Uh, then um, here is it basically the structure of your, uh, of your, unit tests uh, we saw that uh, you have to test to test against actual true values so these are the inputs uh, so in our case of uh, testing extracted data frame uh, we can look at our tweets and then for instance if you are testing for um, um, created at uh, say we have a function in our unit test uh, class called test created at uh, we are going to have, uh, we can choose however number of tweets we want, uh, say uh, to be safe, 10, five, uh, and then you can, uh, we know that our created as function in extracted data frame class um, uh, gives us an array of strings uh, which contains the dates uh, that our tweets were created. So we can also uh, look at those tweets and then create an array which contains uh, the true values contain those tweets and then call our function uh, from the extracted data frame function class and then compare the output of what uh, created that function against the true outputs and then uh, after that uh, you execute the code being tested um, so here I'll, uh, show you just quickly after we finish this uh, sorry uh, Jason, uh, if I, mean, yes, yes. I think uh, there's a hand margaret has got a hand up okay <laughs> yes margaret um i wanted to ask more details about creating the input yes yeah let me let me show you for instance um uh, 
so you can see like my uh, my terminal um, or editor. So say you have um, let's see this. So these are the like the, the structure of a directory. So usually you have your files at the top level, and then you have the directory tests, and then we say that this contains any test, and then also uh, the whatever you want to test. So the way you create inputs is um, uh, you come and look at your say we want to I don't know um, any. Let's do okay. Um, this doesn't look very nice. Okay, so for instance, you know your first five tweets look like this, right? And then you want to test your function. Uh, let's come here. Um, this is uh, we, we want to test this class, and then we want to test, for instance, uh. Uh, we want to test this um, uh, created find created time. Say we have a function in our uh, unit test uh, module called test find created time, right? So what should we do? What we, we are going to do is we are going to look at these actual created time times that we know are true, and then um, this this is how you basically you create input because you know the first five output. Uh, the, the output for the first five tweets should be this, 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 and this. So I'm going to create an array containing this, and then you're going to call self uh, uh, assert uh, echo uh, for this, for the array containing these values, and for the array uh, returned by um, find created time. Oh, sorry, JP, uh, yes. I think some are struggling to see uh, if you can uh, make the the text uh, full screen, uh, uh, we mean yeah, like, like, uh, like maximize. Yeah, if you can maximize, yes. I think they can't see the the code. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Now, can you guys see the? I can make it bigger if you don't. Can you see it? I yeah, I don't it think it's. I don't I think it's visible. If you can maximize a little bit, yeah. Yeah, I make it bigger. Is this big enough? I hope this is big enough. Uh, yeah, what I was saying was um, we we're, were trying, we were taking this function as an example. How can we test this function? Uh, we said that uh, to, to have a, a, su a suite for uh, unit tests, you should create a directory for tests and then have in it uh, um, uh, uh, in it uh, basically it's uh, it's like a function. Uh, really, it's not nothing much is going on there. It's just uh, it, it triggers whatever you're testing to run. So maybe I can I can open the whole thing. Yeah, so uh, yeah testing this um let me show you the function which test that all right maybe that's gonna make it easier. Um, so we, we said we created this directory for test and then we, we have to create in it. Like I said, there's nothing much going on, right? As you can see. Um, so this is just, uh, there's only the doc string in there, but, uh, this defines a package in its function and, uh, it triggers the, whatever is in the package to run. So, uh, what we are interested in is this test extract data frame. Uh, here, 
And basically, um, let's say we have uh, a test uh, find created time. So you come basically, this is the how you create data. This was the original question. Uh, we said that, uh, sorry, I was gonna, we said that uh, to create, um, Yeah, these are, doesn't look very nice. But I really hope the point, uh, the point is clear, right? The, the way you create data and testing is really not that difficult. Um, like I said, you just call the assertion, uh, the assertion inherited from the unit test, uh, test case. And then you call, uh, you have to have the instance of the method of the class you're trying to test. And in this case, we are we are testing uh, we are unit testing our extract data frame here. See, we we have the instance, and what we are doing is we are testing it on the first five tweets. Uh, so, um, and then uh, you have the first five tweets uh, stored in this, and then you call. Uh, let's uh, come down. We were were here so you you call find created time and then you 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 basically just uh, uh, compare assert see if the returned results here is equal to the results to the result we have here hope that's uh that's clear enough um yeah it's clear okay. let's go back to the here Sorry, JP, maybe before you continue, I see a hand uh, from Fiseha. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes, yes Fiseha. Thank you, Musa. Yeah, it's just a really quick question. Uh, what if we have multiple test case classes? I mean, like, imagine we have 10 classes that uh, that are test uh, case classes. The That one init.pi uh, file would uh initialize the test for all the 10 uh, test classes if you have multiple test classes i mean um yeah because you you can have many tests uh, uh unit tests for many uh classes uh you just name them differently uh, so for instance there we have test extract uh data frame uh, you can also have tests uh, yeah. something else if I'm missing something, perhaps yeah. uh, someone could jump in, but uh, that's my assumption. Yeah, I, I think um, yeah. Musa here. Mm -hmm. No, I just wanted to add that uh, basically what the init.py uh, file does is converts the, the directory into a module so that you're able to import um, the, the files on, and, and, and classes and methods that are in there. So you, you only need one in each um, file to convert the whole folder into a module. We just, we just need to uh, put all those test uh, classes in that uh, test uh, folder. That's all we need to do. Yeah, so that's that's how you group, you group your tests. You put them in a test folder, yes. So, so unit mm -hmm. test has a way... Uh -huh. I, are you answered? Okay, sorry, JB, uh, you can continue. Okay, yeah, I hope, like, we just went through all these things. Uh, thanks, Musa Baita. Uh, we just went through all these things. You create your expected results, uh, and then you execute code. You saw how you execute it, self assert equal, uh, and then you, uh, you compare the results returned by your class method, and then you, uh, with the expected results, um, and testing is usually just like three lines of code most of the time. Okay, and then uh, what are the advantages um, of using unit testing? Uh, of course, it's it's meant to help with bugs, uh, detecting bugs, uh, and then uh, better programs. Uh, the tested program, a tested program is a better program. Uh, you, you don't want to ship something which could uh, uh, potentially cause some accidents. So uh, something which has less bugs is better. Um, 
Uh, and then uh, it syncs easily with other testing methods and tools. So this is what we were, we were talking about. Uh, as you could see, it's, it's, it's almost automatic. So you don't have to specify too much. Uh, and then, okay, yeah, perhaps uh, if, if your code is gonna have any bugs, they're going to be as few as possible and you will note them. Uh, so that's the case where you see uh, developers uh, posting bugs saying, uh, our software has these bugs. So at least you know the bugs and you can tell people about the bugs that you have. So, and then um, it's easier to modify. As you, as you could see, if you add one function in one of the classes you're testing, all you have to do is add just one function in the test class. So that's less work than having to uh, test manually if you don't have the uh, unit test module. Yeah, that's all. Uh, and uh, I saw this, I think this was uh, done by Musa. Uh, uh, you, Musa, did you walk people through this? Uh, JB, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, maybe I, I can share my screen. Yeah, let me, so I can, let me share. Okay, one second. Okay, you told me if you can see my screen. Okay, so I'm just going to find uh, that file. Okay, <clears throat> so it's over here. Um, so a lot of people were struggling uh, with executing tests. So I decided to just write this uh, a how to quickly so that you, you know you could you could move forward and submit your your, your assignments. Um, so basically, I'm just here yeah, in the first, you know, this is gen generally what, what you need to do. Uh, so you go into your Twitter data analysis folder, you execute this, uh, this command. Basically, it just says, you know, you need to run, uh, this is the test file that you want to run. Uh, I think with uh, unit test, there's uh, a lot of ways that you can, you know, I think run all the all the tests in a folder, you can run particular classes, you can even run uh, particular test cases within the class, right? Um, yeah, uh, so that you can do that. But what we're doing now here, yeah, simply we're just running all the, the tests, which are, uh, if I have my thing open here, so which are in here, we're just running all of them, right? That's what it says. Um, yeah. So now, basically, I was trying to explain the structure to say what you need to do is when, when you run this, this line, you will get a bunch of errors, right? So I expected the, the topmost error that I, that I got, which is like the, the, the failing test, which is uh, test fine creative time, which uh, JB was, was showing you just now, right? And you, need, you can find that. So you, first you locate well, which test is failing, and then you locate what does that test depend on which function that is that test uh testing right and in our case it's this fine created time uh function that it's testing so as you can see in here it just has return created at right there's there's no data inside a uh, created at right so you need to be able to fix this uh created at uh it's just it's not even a variable it's not being defined right so it definitely is bound to fail and then you know i'm explaining how do you go about actually fixing that uh, so basically, just make sure that uh, this class or this fun this this method of, of of function returns the data that is expected here, right? And I was saying yesterday that you know you, the simplest thing you could do is hard code it, right? Copy this created ad, paste it here, run, run the the test, and then it will pass. But you want it to be dynamic. So the, the idea behind test case uh, tests is is that even if, when the data changes, even when something changes. Your, your test must still pass, your function must still work correctly, right? So you need to be able to implement this um, uh, this function in a way that it passes, but it's still programmatic so that, you know, however your data changes, it will still work, 
Because if you've tested, maybe you want to get the created time of the first five tweets, right? Then it means that if you can get for the first five tweets, it doesn't matter how many tweets uh, you have, you can also get that for all the tweets. So this is just, you know, implementing a simple test case, but it should be applicable uh, broadly, right? And so now that's as I was explaining how you actually fix it. And this is, uh, you know, an example fix to say, you know, this is how you'd get the the created ads um, field uh, from the, the tweet list, and then you return them, and that will make the test pass. So shortly, uh, that's that's basically what this how to um, you know does, and yeah. So based on this, if you can solve it for for created uh, time, then you can solve it for all the other errors that you're getting, as long as you know what the what method methodology you need to follow. Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure if if that is clear or if there are any hands uh, at the moment, but yeah, that's 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 what the document uh, explains. Um, Ola Dimeji, yes. Um, hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, so I have a question. So in this test file, we in the test file. Uh, Yes, in the test part, like, this one. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, if we don't have um status count in it, should we add it or should we remove? It? Uh, let me see. There's no status count. I don't think. Uh, there is. It's there's a there's a test for status count. Okay. Yes. Sorry. So, so sorry. But scroll up. There, there is a test for status count. But if you scroll up, scroll up here in the yeah, scroll up. Yeah. Yeah. Scroll uh -huh. up. I don't think status counts is not in this column, and it is not in. Uh, oh, it's not this uh, yet. Yes, I'm and, I'm it's not, and it's not in our main, in our main. Um, say we come to this fix extracts or the extracts. It's not. A, it's not part of the this thing, of the of the columns. It's not part of this list of columns. Yes, and if you come to this, come to this fix extracts here on the on the file this fix extracts or the extracts one or oh, the this uh fix extract this one yeah yeah this one maybe scroll, mm -hmm. scroll down to the end mm -hmm. so uh, yeah. yeah scroll back up up so status counts is not also here so we should go ahead to add it or we should leave it that's one thing because it's not referenced anywhere Inside. Are you saying there's no there's no function here for status count? No, there's a function, but it's uh -huh. not referenced to could be created in the columns. Okay, so so it's not here in this in this columns. Is what you mean? Yeah, from, from this from this from this self from this one up. From this, uh, JB, I'm not I'm not following um, the question. I'm not sure if JB should understand. Up. From this um, hashtags equals to self does created as equals to, to can, you, can, you tell me, can you tell me the number? No, status okay, so count yeah. is not here at all. The line number. Okay. Status count is not referenced here. And here. It's not, yeah, and it's not referenced inside the columns. It's not referenced inside this function in particular. So should we add it? Yeah, I think if it's missing, you can add it. Um, because basically, what you, you are creating a, a data frame, right? So if there's a column that, huh? Yes, yes, I'm with you. Yeah, so you are creating a data frame. So if you feel that maybe among the columns, uh, you know, it's been listed, but it's not showing anywhere, or you know, if it's just missing, I think you can add it, uh, because you're just creating a data frame with all the data. Uh, yeah, I think I don't think it, it can only break anything. You should be able to add it if it's not there. Uh, but yeah, but I'll look into that. Um, yeah, I haven't seen it, but I'll look into that. But I think you should be able to add it uh, because it's just uh, what data um, are, you, are you making available for further analysis, right? That's what this uh, data frame is about. So if you, you know, might make use of the status card to do your analysis or machine learning or visualizations, et cetera. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. That's, 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 that's OK, you're welcome. Uh, is there another question based on what I was showing here? Okay, uh, I think people, okay, Margaret? 
I'm, I'm finding it hard to understand um, line number seven and eight. Uh, seven and eight. Yeah, so where you, the modules that you're extracting from and where you're importing to. Um, you mean which file are we, are we looking on, at? On um, test extract data from the py. Okay, in, in this file, okay. Which line? Um, seven and eight. Line seven and eight, this one? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I keep getting an error on line seven and eight, and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to edit the read JSON to... Um, uh, yeah, just, just so what, what's your what does your error say? Um, cannot import name. Uh, uh -huh. It's a long error. Are you able so to saying, post it on the chat? Okay, yeah. Yeah, please. Okay. Okay. But um, can you just explain uh, those two okay. lines? So basically, what, what is happening here is that we are just importing. I think someone asked in one of the sessions to say, you know, can we import files that we create, right, in the notebooks? So basically, that's what they're doing here, right? To say from extract data frame, right, which is this one, which is this uh, file, right? From extract data frame, import, I think they're importing red JSON. Let's see. So yeah, so basically that's what you are doing. You are you are you are telling uh, Python to go into into this file and and import this and make this function that's been defined here available uh, to your test um, file. Basically that's what's happening. Same as here, you are going into extract data frame and I think you are importing a class called tweet df extractor, which is this one. So you can imp you can import. Uh, actual functions or you can even import classes, right? But if you import a class, then it means that you will use that class to actually call a method. So here in this class, there are all these methods that have been defined. So you use that class to actually, you know, call these methods that have been defined. Ah, okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, you're welcome. Um, Jay, uh, if there are no more hands, I think I can hand back to you, uh, JB. Okay, cool. yeah. Second. I just wanted to answer Michael here. Uh, that is sure. getting a character error uh, when he's trying when he's testing for full text. Uh, and uh, uh, he's saying that he's testing from the CSV file, but I would say paste uh, copy from the, the JSON file. And uh, in the JSON file, the first five tweets are by are written in German, uh, and make sure that uh, you are not changing anything, because you may you may be putting the tweets in a uh, in an editor which changes them. Uh, make sure that you don't change anything. Then copy those tweets. The text, uh, if you are reading the text as the full text file, and. Um, uh, and then your your test for, for text should work just fine. Okay, some people okay. have raised like uh, guess you can receive them. Yeah, I'm 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 seeing the 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 the, the comments here in the chat. Is Michael answered on his question? This is. Um, Michael, can we uh, maybe uh, talk in the Slack and uh, okay, maybe look at what you're hoping and okay, and then try to help. Yeah, so I think I'm not sure if if you had more uh, JB if you had more content uh, to present. But I think this is turning into a debugging session. <laughs> Uh, and I'm not sure if we should we should be going that way. Uh, if we, maybe we should take the debate. Yeah, I really, uh, I don't have any more content to present. Uh, okay. There's there's much uh, to talk about in unit testing. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, if anyone has a question about it, we can use the, the, the remaining 20 minutes to okay. answer the questions about unit testing. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. So I'm not sure where to start. So, okay. Let me look at, because uh, people have been posting comments here. Um, so correct says, can you write a simple, a simple test for the clean treats class? Um, I'm not sure um, which which one is the clean treats uh, class. So, correct uh, if you if you can um, explain your your request. Correct, are you able to explain your request? Jb, is the twin uh, tweets class in the in the other um, um, code base or other? Is, is it in the in the notebooks or? Okay, so it's saying in the other file. Okay, what what's the name of the file, uh, Jb? Oh, this one. Okay, twin tweets that are frame. Okay, clean tweets that are frame. Okay. Uh, okay, so okay, so my my code base is, is, is a bit corrupted because I have uh, solutions and, and 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 the questions. So maybe I shouldn't even be, I should be showing the the fixed ones, not. Uh, okay, so clean tweets. So this fixed clean tweets that are frame. Okay, so this is what we have. So we have the clean tweets class here. And we have, you know, a bunch of, um, of of functions here, which which have been defined but haven't been implemented, right? Uh, so, uh, Corridor's ask is that if you can find it, he wants a simple test for this class, right? So, um, okay, so we don't, okay, so here this one is testing the extract data frame, uh, okay, so. I think we can try that. So I'm just going to duplicate this. Okay, rename this. Test. Okay. it. Okay. Okay, so, all right, cool. So that's what we have. So I will basically, I will, okay, set up. Okay, so what I will do here, um, because this test are for, something else so i'll remove all these tests okay we'll be left with uh, the setup method right uh which gives us the tweet df extractor so this might might take a while uh, because i've edited a lot of things so so we need to rename this to what it's actually doing so we're testing um you know clean tweet we're still um inheriting from unit test of test case now, um, okay, cool. So clean tweets, what is it? Uh, fix clean tweets that are frame, okay, this is what we have. Uh, okay, so it does uh, initialize a data frame. Okay, so test clean tweets. Uh, okay, so it should be, okay, so, oh yeah, so you need to import the class, right? So this is, uh, from, uh, I think for now, for me, it's still, so I'll, I'll just, yeah, so for me, it's still uh, fixed. So from, just comment that out, I'm not sure if we'll need it. So from fix. Uh, so I'm not reading the comments, but I'm, I'm hoping that, that you're following. Um, and JP, if I can't see if someone is asking a question, please alert me. Okay, so okay, so fix extract. Okay, so this is this would be fix uh, into data frame, which is this one, and they were importing this class. Okay, okay, which is this one. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so we imported that. Okay, I'll come back to this. Um, 
Okay, so this is what we're getting here. So now we're getting into it. Okay, here they decided to just grab the first five tweets, right? So I'm hoping, because, okay, um, I'm hoping that we do have the actual data, because I might, but I think I could still use this uh, COVID-19 just to demonstrate. Um, but I may not, I, I don't think I have the the actual clean tweets. Um, JB, do you have um, the file for the actual clean tweets? You know? So, sorry, I was saying they don't have the file. You don't have the file for the actual. So it, yeah, it might okay, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, with that. Let's just go and, and we'll, we'll we'll resolve it when we get <laughs> when we get to an issue. Okay. Yeah, you so can the, basically yeah. show the concept and then um, assume yeah. you have clean tweets. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm I'm trying to do. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, so we've done the setup. Uh, so basically. With within a class, what a setup uh, method uh, does is it creates uh, all the objects or, or whatever um, variables that you will need within uh, your class, right? So you have a setup, and I think you have a tear down as well method, which sort of cleans. So maybe you want to you initialize a certain variables and, and you want to clean. You want to make sure that when you get out of that test then whatever it was happening doesn't contaminate uh, the rest of the test. So you can have a, a setup and a tear down, right? Uh, so that's what the setup does. It says, you know, make sure that uh, this data frame is available for all my uh, my tests that I'm going to write here. Okay, so you write a first test. So you have to start with the main test when you write a test. Um, okay, I'm seeing a comment here. From extract data frame imports doesn't work. It should be able to work because it does exist, right? It does. Like, you've seen that it does exist here, so that should be able to work. But let me, you know, let's just finish one uh, train of thought, and then we'll, we'll move to the next things. So here, uh, uh, I think what Corridus asked was a simple test for clean to its class. Okay, cool. So what we can do is we can just go to test, clean tweets, data frame, and okay, so this has already been implemented. So this is easy, right? It seems that this has already been implemented. So let's see if it works. So we can, yeah, so let's, let's have some quick wins. <laughs> see if drop unwanted column works properly. So let's test it. Uh, okay, so let's test this. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Right, so this is what we're testing. Okay, let's just so uh, what you have in uh, in tests. I think it's called uh, there's terminology to say you know what do you need to do. Um, I forget it, but basically you you have you set up um, you know so you, you say what do I expect and what do I do and what do I expect to get. Um, yeah, I forget that the, there's a nice, um, I think it's asset something, uh, but yeah, I forget it now. But there's a three stage process, right? Uh, so I'll use an example here and test extract data frame. Uh, so this is what they've done, right? So they've created, uh, you know, so, sort of like a setup to say, this is the result that I expect, and this is what I expect to get back, right? So normally, you know, you wouldn't. Uh, put it like this, you do this, you'd say, um, uh, so this would be, would be something like expected, right? Because that's what you expect. And then uh, is it given, okay? And then, and then now you compare the expected result from the given result, right? So basically you say, you know, this is what I expect to get, right? I'm calling my find created time um, method, which must implement uh, this, um, it, which must give me the, the, the created time. Am I getting that, right? And then you test these two things. So basically what you get here and what you get here should be equal. That's what you're, that's what you're expecting. You're expecting this, this uh, find created time to return exactly this list. Because, because how, how do you know what you expect? 
because you probably, as David was showing you, you probably looked at the actual data, right? You've looked at the actual, oh, it's, it's too big. Okay, let me see if I can, uh, let's see, data, and think if I do, is it more or less? If I do more, uh, COVID, right? So you've looked at this this file and you know that we okay, created at the first one must return this, right? Let's just see if this is what they're testing. So let me just paste that there. You see Friday 18. So you said this is the same. I, I didn't copy the last one. So you said this first value and this first value are the same, right? I think so. So you've looked at your actual data to see, okay, if, if this function is working properly, this is what it must give me because I've looked at my data and I know what I'm expecting, right? So that's how you come up with these numbers. You've looked at your data and you know the result you must get, right? But now you want to implement a function that does that for you programmatically, right? For any of the created uh, ads, um, you know, for your, for each tweet, right? So now we're, here I think we're looking at five, but you can imagine if you have a million tweets, if this function can work for five, it, it definitely will be able to work for a million. Right, so that's the idea. Cool. So in here, okay. So so expected given and then and then we are set, right? So in clean tweets, so let's just do it. expected. And we do a given and then we do our set <coughs> to see that we're getting it. Cool. Um so so we expect so test drop unwanted color, right? We need to decide, okay, what is that column that we don't want? Okay, so in test clean trades, so here, uh, okay, so, so we're getting a data frame and unwanted rows, uh, and those ones, okay, so hmm, this is weird, and I have to print this out to see what's okay, so okay, every two count is equal to the two count. The index. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, we have a problem. So here uh, they are saying drop unwanted column, but then here they they are implementing uh, unwanted rows. You see, so there's a bit of a mismatch there. Um, so okay, so maybe let's yeah, because this is gonna be a bit difficult to implement because it's not doing what it's saying here. Uh, it's actually do, doing drop unwanted rows, right? As you can see here, right? It's, it's trying to drop unwanted rows and, you know, the data frame, the drop, you know, unwanted, because now you're getting the indices, right? So here you find that, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what this value is because, yeah, it, what it should look like, it should be something like, you know, if the return count is an actual number, like, like 50 or something. Uh, but you know, I made it to look at that some more. But basically, the results that you're getting there is you probably get zero, one, two, right? So these are the, in the indices that you you want to drop. And when you do DF to drop, then you know first you can actually look at your data frame, right? So the quickest thing you do is you do uh, print DF dot head, right? And basically, n equals five. You want to see the first five rows? You print it. You look at it, and now here, this is these are the the rows that you want to remove. And then you actually do the implementation. Right? And once you've implemented, you can actually print again. Uh, this is how I build it. So you can actually print again, right, to see if the rows that you are seeing here are here. Right? You shouldn't see them. If this works, then you shouldn't see them. Right? So basically, in, in, in test mode, what we're doing, because we can't always be printing things out here, we're saying that instead of me looking at it, you know, visually here, what I want to do is I'm going to return this data frame. Uh, and when I return it in here, where I'm actually calling, right? So when I'm actually calling uh, this function, right? So, okay, so we expect, okay, so, yeah, so this is, Unwanted rows. Okay. Um, so, okay, we want to drop. Okay, what can we do here? Okay, let's think on the fly. Okay, so maybe what we can do is do shape, right? Um, 
I, I, please let me know if you guys are not following. Uh, so far, I mean, just, you know, look at the comments and uh, JP. Also, if you if you see something, uh, let me know. Um, okay, but yeah, this is okay. So, so basically, like JP was saying that you need to figure out what you are trying to test, right? Um, so I think here, yeah, what you can do to to find out that you've dropped the unwanted rows, um, the probably the easiest thing is to say, uh, you know. You know the shape of your initial uh, data frame, right? First, you know the shape of your initial data frame, which is, uh, which which is the dimensions. You know x number of rows, y number of columns. So here, uh, I can say, um, I'm expecting. I think shape is a tuple, so I'm expecting this to have. Let's say this, I'm making this up. We'll change them. I'm expecting a hundred rows. In maybe you know ten columns. That's my expectation, right? And now I want to uh, okay. So it's shape. Okay, I'm just gonna say expected shape, and then returned return shape. Okay. So where do we get this return shape? We get it from remember this class, right? So this is the class that contains the method to test tweets. All right, so if we do, yeah, I can clean tweets. Okay, let's do this. This would be the easiest thing uh, from, okay, we'll do that. But if we do, I think this should be able to work. Okay, so I'm writing a lot of code without testing. <laughs> uh, this is a recipe for disaster, but let's see. So let's, and then uh, import this. So how do they do it here? Let's just see. Okay, so they said, oh, serve the DF, so they've, okay. <sighs> okay, here what they've done is they've, they've this is how they're calling it. Um, they're calling it through the data, yeah, okay. Um, because it's a, I don't think it's an actual data frame, it's, it's a class. So, yeah, okay, so this is a class, not an actual data frame, so I'll call it, you know, clean it, right? It's a class, this is a class which implements, you know, which way is it? Which implements all these methods, right? But of course, yes, this, each of these methods is retaining a data frame, right? So so there, there is, you know, something there, but okay. Uh, okay, so let's see. So clean to it, that's what, that's the class, because it's easier when you name your, your code properly to know what, what, what is happening, right? And then we'll do this. So now we're invoking. Okay, I think yeah, let's do that. Okay, let's. I think we don't need this uh, because yeah, I just wanted to, to import the actual um, method, but I think we can get the method from from this class. Okay, so this is our class, and then we want uh, we want this one drop unwanted rows, right? So we're ac accessing this class, and then we're, we're then through this class accessing this method. Okay, so cool, so dot that, right? Drop unwanted rows, right? So we need to see, you know, does drop unwanted rows, you know, take anything, right? Okay, it takes self, which is, you know, it's the class. That's how you refer to objects within the class. And then it's also you know, accepting a data frame, right? So we need to be able to give it the data frame. Uh, but where do we get the data frame? Okay, so we should have a data frame here. Okay, 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 okay. Just give me one sec. Okay, this is the data frame. Maybe it's getting it from here. That's why they wrote it like that. Okay, let me just look at this one. That's been implemented. Is there any place where they are asking for a data frame? Okay, you see here, uh, okay, with fine sentiments, there's... <coughs> This is what, this is the implementation and they're giving it, okay, so this fine sentiments is in test. It's, a, no, it's an extract data frame. So just look for a uh, fix extract data frame, right? Okay, so it's getting, yeah. So it's you're referring to the current class and it's getting text. And I think this is, is it? Yeah, so this is, okay, find full text. So it's actually using 
uh, another df but find it's using another method to get that data okay but i see a comment here someone's trying to help me you can check if you have a file with the name extractor okay uh, okay just one sec mm, okay let's see okay. if anyone can see uh, has a solution for me can see where i'm going wrong uh, you can you can shout Okay, but let's let's not pass anything, right? Let's <clears throat> just also, you know, allow the code to give you the error, right? And then now we want to okay, so return shape. So drop unwanted rows actually returns nice. uh, drop unwanted rows returns a data frame. Okay, that's fine. So let's say df here, so return a data, data frame. But then here this one we can implement as df dot shape. Okay, and then we asset uh, asset equal that expected shape is equal to the shape that we're getting. Okay, uh, return shape. Okay, cool. All right, and that's that's the test that we've written. Uh, let's execute it and and see if if it's going to work out. All right, cool. So I'll just go to okay, so test into it. Uh, okay, I mean what we didn't use some of these things, but it's fine. Let's let's try run it so that we can see what's what's happening, right? If we get errors, let's get them early on. So I'm gonna go to the uh, root directory of my code. Let's see what's in there, and then I think I should be able to go. remember that. So test now we're testing. Uh, Test clean trips. Okay, let's run that. Let's see what we get. Okay, uh, we have an error in line 28, which is the syntax error in this file. Okay, to fix was line 28. Okay, here. Uh, okay, so this is just the, yeah, I think, you know, this, all these uh, errors will keep coming back. So let's just ignore these other files, these other um, methods for now, because we're not trying to, 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 to fix the, this at the moment, right? The syntax errors, but let's, let's ignore that. Let's test our function. And then here, uh, the error is, I can see some of it because of my screen. Okay. Uh, Okay, doesn't matter. So PD PD is not defined. Okay, name error. So in clean tweets, we have a name error which says PD is not defined. So in line five, clean tweets. Okay, so we go to test. Okay, fix this line five. P oh, okay. I think probably what we need here is to import pandas as pd. Okay, that's what I expected once. Okay, let's try that again. Run that again. Okay, cool. Now we have a different error. Okay, that's that's in, that's convincing, right? So it says name register is not defined in test line eleven. Okay, test into it's line eleven. Uh, Okay, it seems somewhere it's being used, this thing. Okay, where is it being used? Okay, let's see where it's being used. I thought we were not gonna need it. Oh, because it's, okay, it's getting this data, so it's being used. Okay, let's see, let's run that again. Okay, it's gonna be good time. Okay, now we have a failing test, right? Great. Um, so no syntax errors at the moment. So it's okay. That's this is our test. Uh, it says it takes zero po positional arguments, but one given. Okay. Cool. So where's our test? This one. It takes zero positional um, arguments, but one given. So because when you do this, you are okay. So let's see. Okay. 
Because I mean, it does us require a data frame here. Yeah, you may want to pass in the self DF. Uh, here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, which is the same. Okay, let me let me uh, so that it's easier to follow. So change that now. But I've done this, which is sort of. But you see, the error is different. The error is saying it takes zero positional arguments, but one given. One was given. It says it, acts, it doesn't want any argument, but we've given it one, which is, which is this one. I'm not sure if we're, we're together, JB. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, let's see. Yeah, someone is saying, yeah, it shouldn't take any argument. But, but this is how, this is the only way to call it. We have to call it. But it does, so here, you know, in clean tweets, right? It's, it, of course, it's, you know, it's, a, it's taking a reference to the class that it belongs to, right? Uh, so this is like, you know, not an argument really, but the only argument that we're, we are having is this one, which is one. And this is the one that, that we're passing here. So I don't see an issue unless, um, we need to pass the argument of df, okay? Uh, you need to just do something like df equals. Yeah, okay. Uh, to list. Oh, okay. It probably it's here, guys. <laughs> probably it's, okay. It's the class that's complaining. It's not this function. I think it's the class. Let's see the class. Uh, because remember, we just renamed this class. It was uh, extract something. Okay, so let's see. Let's find it. Okay. So, okay. So here, it does. Okay, it does take a, a data frame. Uh, okay. Okay. So yes. Okay. But this is the treat list. Where, do, where is our treat list? Which is this one. And then we'll take. So this is, this is definitely a data frame. Okay. Um, let's just do that. Okay. So it's not confusing. Okay. That. Um, so let's see. Print DF. Okay. Let's see what we have there. And then clean tweets. We're giving it okay. Okay, then for now let's just ignore that. Let's run it. I think we'll just do the setup. Print for us. Um let's ignore that for now. Let's see what's going on there. Okay. Now read your comments as well. So ooh, Martin. Okay. But, okay, I see what, okay, let's just say our errors, I'll come to you, Martin. Okay, so ran zero test, everything is okay, but in, it didn't print. It didn't print. Uh, okay, let's, let's check here. Let's check that out there. Is someone speaking? Martin, are you trying to say something? Uh -huh. I'm listening. So you're saying I should implement? Please speak louder. You can go to the test clean tweets file. Uh, I hope you can hear me. I can hear you now. Yes. Yeah, you can go to the test clean tweets file. Okay, the test. Yeah. Or, uh, clean test tweets, clean this one. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Then, uh, in the setup, where you yes. where you've done the yeah. self uncomment the self dot df. Yes. And then uh, uncomment uh, the test. The test. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, in the self dot uh, df yes. self mm -hmm. dot df dot drop unwanted draws, pass the argument inside uh, that. Inside, so, inside, okay. inside the 
inside the parentheses you can pass this argument self Which argument? Dot, self dot df dot df self dot df dot df yeah are you sure the yeah. df like this yeah Ooh, are you sure okay uh, and then run this yeah uh, okay let's see what happens Red one test. Init missing one required personal argument df. So you, oh, see you, you, you need to you need to say df is equals to uh, df yeah. is equals to self dot df dot df. Um, wait 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 wait. And where? Uh, in line thirty seven. Line, line thirty seven. Mm -hmm. I should say. Uh, inside the argument, you can say df is equals to self.df.df in here yeah df is equals to self.df.df oh it's a post okay so there's a personal argument okay yeah so like, like this yeah both of them or just one yeah it's it's two it's two self.df.df okay is it this df that you are saying no 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 it's just it's... uh the way the way it is is it okay? Let me let me just return this, and I, I think I have a problem with using df so many times. Yeah, right? like that. Because we don't know like the like, uh -huh. like the, the way it is. Just run it. Okay. The way it is. It takes zero personal argument, but one was given. Musa, there's something that you were going to do. Um, okay, I think you did it. Yeah. I did it okay yeah guys i think i don't think we'll get this one working um yeah, in such a space, space so space of time um yeah i don't think i don't think we'll be able to i think we need to set up um, another station and you know because uh, yeah because i haven't done this yet so if maybe if, you know I, I, or, uh, I can, I, can, I, I, can I, I share my screen sure sure okay okay Okay, I'm gonna switch off my video. Yeah, I don't know whether you can uh, be able to see it. Uh, you can be able to see my screen. Uh, can you be able to see my yes, screen? Yes, I can see it, but it's a bit small. Your your code is a bit small. Uh huh. And now? Uh, how about now? It's big enough, Martin. All right. Uh, so. I still can't see your, your code. If you can make it a bit bigger. Uh, okay. Uh, can you see it right now? Yeah, it's better. command it takes some time to run but uh, it will complete uh, my machine is a bit slow but uh, yeah it's completed <coughs> so for the 
for the drop unwanted columns, uh, the way I uh, personally did it was uh, I got the uh, self.df.columns, I got the length of the columns, then I checked the length of the uh, columns of the of the ones for the drop unwanted column. So the self.df uh, was, as I was, I was requesting was that you could pass the self.df then uh, read the CSV uh, that uh, you already have generated from the extract tweets, uh, extract tweets. So when you run the test for test job unwanted column, uh, you can be able to just pass that particular argument and you can be able to succeed to check whether they are equal. Yeah, that's all. <clears throat> yeah, but your self.df is, is like tweet list, right? That's what it is in, in my uh, code. Uh, oh, for, for tweet list, you know, uh, it's a uh, JSON. It's a, uh -huh. uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a JSON uh, parameter. So yeah. for, for you to, con you have to first of all, convert it to a P uh, Pandas data frame. Yeah, but you can, you can, like when you can read JSON, right, in Pandas. Yeah, right. so, so like, uh, for, for the clean kits, just mm -hmm. let me share. Uh, the self.df was the data frame itself, but mm -hmm. the drop unwanted columns, it takes uh, a parameter for the data frame. Yeah. So, yeah, so once once you pass in the... Once you pass in the data frame, you are able to get it. But you see, in the extract, in the extract data frame, the result eventually is uh, is coming from this JSON file. So when you just pick only maybe five of those, it will only pick it as a JSON file instead of a pandas data frame. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. Okay. Um... Okay, I'll look. I'll look into this. Uh, maybe you can uh, share your repo with me. Uh, then I, uh, I can try see what's going on between the the two repos. All right. Uh, yeah. And then yeah. And then I'll, I'll I'll refer to everyone. So I'm not sure if everyone is following what um, is it? It's Martin. Yes. Was 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 showing us. Um, I I still need to check it. I'm not sure. But yeah. Uh, Ola Dimeji, your hand is, is up. Oh, um, never mind. I just wanted to ask back then how you handled the read chasing um, error. Because I was having the same error and I still don't know how to handle it. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think that that one is not a big deal. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you on Slack. But yeah, reading, uh, it's not, yeah, I think, yeah, I think the, the issue I was having is really setting up the test, given the arguments for, for all the different uh, classes and, and, and methods, which I was not sure of. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that as well. Uh, Johans? Johans, your hand is up. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry. Michael, uh, so we are talking about the unit testers. Uh, I have passed the the testers, uh, but on the task one, uh, number nine, it says uh, when we push new code or uh, branch it with main branch, uh, it with main branch, uh, the unit testers should uh, run automatically, right? Uh, I need some clarification on this. Or if anyone has completed that task, uh, it will fully broken share us with Slack. So, sorry, your answer. I didn't quite follow. Uh, you saying uh, which task? Uh, the unit test is right. Once we completed writing the, the unit tests. Okay, is that task? Okay, uh, let me just go to the tasks. Yeah, on the task one, uh, number task nine. nine okay. Number nine, okay, yes. Yeah, 
use GitHub actions in your repository such that when you get a push new uh, code, yeah. the unit test runs automatically. Yeah, um, I'll show you uh, this this afternoon. Okay, it's 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 part of the uh, the afternoon lesson. I'll show you. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, is there anyone else with a question? Oh, uh, JB. Yes, Musa. I think yeah. I think yeah. the the tutorial has gone on for too long. Uh, yeah. Someone... I think. We to... I think. I think we just need to set a, a special uh, session uh, mm -hmm. because we we spent so much time debugging. Uh, so let me run through the code, etc., and then get and look at uh, what Martin uh, has done, and then we'll 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 uh, engage the the rest of the students. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, but uh, overall, I feel like uh, the, the basic concepts of unit testing should be clear to everyone yeah. like, at this point. Yeah. All right, so see you guys in the afternoon. Uh, uh, I'll be off. All right.